everyone. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop. I hope you are all having a wonderful day. So today we are going to be talking about the weight of our sky. I have to say this was it's quite simply a brilliant novel. Um, I'm really sad and mad at myself for letting it sit on my bookshelf for so long. So the book takes place in 1969 in Malaysia and it follows Melody who deals with OCD. But I think the most telling thing about this novel is she thinks her OCD is a djinn living inside of her, tormenting her with thoughts of her mother's death. So um, the best way I can equate her OCD is if you've seen Monk, it's kind of like that. After the death of her father, her... OCD went into overdrive. Now you have to remember, OCD wasn't a recognized disorder until the 1980s when it was finally classified as an anxious disorder. So people didn't really know what it was, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder. So when she, you know, tells her mother all these things, her mother just doesn't want her to be put in an asylum. That is her biggest fear. So she tries to see a lot of, you know, new age doctors. And she's also told, yeah, it's a gin living inside of her. So I think it's just very telling um, the way her OCD affects her. And it really does affect her the same way it does affect Adrian Monk from Monk after the death of Trudy. It goes into overdrive. That's the best way I can really describe it, um, how it is developed in a novel. But I really loved it because the opening line is, by the time she gets to school, her mother has died, I think, 11 or 7 times. And it shakes her to her core because she has no idea how to really deal with her OCD. It's very confusing for her. She doesn't know what this is. She is convinced that it is a demon that's living inside her and that's tormenting her. And while this is happening, the book takes place right at the beginning of the 1969 race riots in Malaysia. Now, the Florida education system completely failed me. <laughs> I had to do my own research on these race riots. It doesn't matter that I took AP Honors World History. This topic of the 1969 race riots, I have no recollection of it whatsoever. None whatsoever. And I work at a bookstore where I work with some high schoolers. And I asked them, I'm like, did you guys learn about this in world history? None of them have any idea. Um, So the Florida school system really did fail me on that because this is such an important topic. And I think it's really, really important to discuss and recognize the horrors and atrocities that do happen in other countries. The race riots are, I encourage you to really just... There's not enough time for me to really delve into it and give you a history lesson, but just Google 1969 race riots Malaysia, and here's a general synopsis. You know, in 1969, Malaysian general election, um, the riot occurred in the aftermath of the 1969 Malaysian general election when opposition parties such as the Democratic Action Party and the Garrican made gains at the expense of the ruling coalition, the Alliance Party. There's definitely a lot more that goes into it. I really encourage you to delve into it the way I did and research it because it impacts the story a lot. It deals a lot with race. And you're following Melody. She's separated from her friend. I mean, men with machetes come into the movie theater. And they keep her friend and anyone else who um, is of a different race, and they let Melody go. So you already know what's, what's about to happen. I think the author did a fabulous job of just 
giving you enough information without being explicit. This is a young reader's book and you don't have to be explicit to tell a story. You know, you don't have to show all the cold brutality and violence in a novel. If you just show enough, like the tip of the tip of the iceberg, the imagination does the rest and it is impactful to the reader because you know exactly what happened. Um, you know her friend died, her 16 year old friend. You know that you can only hope that it was a swift death. A young pretty girl, you know, you can only imagine what was done to her. So we can only hope that she died quickly and did not suffer and was not in any pain other than the absolute terror. I mean, it's horrific. But the author doesn't go into the details. She doesn't show you step by step the horrors and atrocities. She paints a scene and she lets you fill it in. And I think that that's really wonderful because it does open up the door for discussion and it does draw you in because again, it's not explicit and I don't think you need to be super explicit when it comes to writing stories like this. Um, you just have to look at history and use your imagination and you fill in the rest. So it was a very powerful story and it was incredibly powerful. And I do like the fact that that Melody, she's been separated from her mother. All she wants to do is find her mother. She found a family who took her in and saved her. And all the while she has to con contend with her OCD and find a way to get back to her mother. And it's just a very powerful story to, to just, <sighs> there's a lot of emotion when it goes into this book and I, I felt it, I felt the emotion. And I like that I learned something new and I'm really ashamed that I didn't know it beforehand. Um, I really am ashamed that I had no knowledge of this. Um, so I, I really do encourage everyone to read it. I really do think this is a book you can read for school that does open up a lot of topic for discussion as well, um, for young readers. So once again, um, I'm gonna have to give this book five out of five stars. Absolutely powerful storytelling. I love how it deals with mental illness. I love how it's realistic. I love how it's appropriate. You know, I love how the author decided to tell a very emotive story without being explicit um, in the horrors that do happen when it comes to these sort of situations. So once again, five out of five stars for The Way to Our Sky. Um, I really do encourage you guys to read it. So I will include links in the description below on where you can purchase this book. And on that note, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, please don't forget to support this podcast by liking it, subscribing to it, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. You can also become a supporter on Buy Me Coffee, Ko-fi, Patreon, by purchasing one of my handmade candles, or by following any of my social media platforms. Once again, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy reading! Mm -hmm.